You're now listening to the Adiel Gorel Show. Each episode, I'll bring you the latest news for my discussions with top health and wellness experts so that you can bring yourself into better health. Today on the Adiel Gorel Show. You should. And um, in fact, in that presentation that I did, I, I showed people my formula for my smoothie and okay, in, okay. including I, uh, we, yeah including lemons and take you know and putting the peel in to to get all the bioflavonoids and the fiber yeah so i believe you need a range of different vegetable fibers i also think it's useful to do the viome testing hi everyone it's a pleasure to be here with you again today i'm super excited and i really mean that it's been about a year since I talked to my friend, Dr. John Sottery. And John is an ever, a, a, you know, improving a source of data for us that can make our lives better because John is on the cutting edge of research worldwide. He always knows what's going on. Welcome to the show, John. Ariel, it's great, great to be here and, and great to see you. Thank you for the, for the nice words. I appreciate it. So I'm, I, am Just, a, I am obsessed, and I, you're someone that appreciates the obsession to dig in and find the top people in the world, the best science, you know, and try to pull it all together because understanding is nice, but if you can't make it actionable, then you don't improve people's lives. And I've always been... a a fan of applied science, where I like good science, but it's when it changes somebody's life. To me, that's the magic. So, yeah. Absolutely, and in fact, to uh, you know, illustrate how this is very special to me, and I've been waiting to do this interview. Normally, when I interview an expert, I read their book, I go and um, they send me questions, I send them questions, I have questions ready to ask and then of course we go different places based on the content with sure. you i have nothing prepared okay. in terms of questions right. because i know you're going to be you're going to be telling us about new stuff sure. and that is so exciting to me so john uh, when we talked last time wonderful delightful you know interview where you told us about the finer points of vitamin K, you told us about the finer points of vitamin E that many of us didn't really know sure. about. So it's been quite a while and I'm sure there's a lot of new stuff. I'm so excited. I'm going to let you take us. Yeah, we, we talked about K2, how to keep the calcium out of your arteries, get it to your teeth and your bones so you have strong bones and you don't die from heart disease. And we talked about gamma tocopherol and delta tocopherol because those molecules are not just antioxidants, but they seem to have a very major effect on several types of cancer and important ones like prostate cancer and possibly breast cancer. So those are just, a, if anyone, I'm just trying to, if anyone wants to go back and watch the previous episode, there's some good stuff there for them. So, great. Um, do you want me to jump in and start? Telling you what I've I would like you to because you know the the beauty of this and what gets me really riled up for this interview is that I don't know where to ask because <laughs> I, I would like you you know to take us that, that's exciting sure, to me sure sure yeah I mean uh, there are things that I've been working on over the last twelve months that I think are really significant in terms of health span and in terms of background on me. Uh, I'm a 63-year young scientist. I don't like to say 63-year-old. You know, I'll be 64 next year. Um, I'm focused on how do I maximize health span. And really, there's two big aspects. One is you have to understand how do you slow down damage or stop damage in some cases. And then how do you accelerate repair? So... I study it from a molecular perspective because that's how my brain works. I need to understand things at the most fundamental level. But instead of just understanding it, I want to then say, based on that great science, how can I take advantage of that? 
Is there a food that I need to consume? Is there a supplement that's really good? And which one? And, you know, what are the watch outs? So we'll talk about some science today, but I also want to make sure that we bridge it over to the point where you can use it to really, you know, improve your life. I did want to say one thing before we get rolling, and that is I am a PhD scientist. I am not a medical doctor. I don't provide medical advice. I'm going to try to show you some great research and try to explain how things work, hopefully with some metaphors to make it more digestible, but I'm not providing any medical advice. These you should look at as ideas that you can then go and do some further research on and then have a conversation with your healthcare provider before you go down any roads. And that's always a good idea because they know your medical history. So I just want to put that out up front and uh, um, get rolling. Um, so there's one thing <clears throat> that I think is, one of the things that I think is interesting, and because it seems to be a root cause of heart disease, of brain fog, chronic inflammation, and even just feeling toxic or depressed. And um, uh, it's called LPS. There are lipopolysaccharides. And you know, many people have never heard of those. And I do want to do a quick hat tip to Dr. Rhonda Patrick because seeing one of Rhonda's pre recent presentations, she started talking about articles that I hadn't seen. And I was like, whoa, this stuff is great. And I really dug into it. But I wanted to just say thank you, Rhonda, for pointing me in that direction. And, and it, was, it was outstanding. So LPS, are, they come from the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria that you have in your gut. And some of those bacteria are friendly and they're not a problem. But if some of them, uh, when they are killed off or when they die, those membrane components come out. If your gut barrier is really good, then they don't get across into your bloodstream. And that's a great thing. Um, but many of us have some inflammation in our gut. We have, some people call it leaky gut, some people call it gut permeability. And so some of that LPS crosses over into your bloodstream. And it is one of the things, um, uh, what's the technical term? It really pisses off your immune system. When they see this- It's very technical. Yeah, yeah, I thought you'd like that. When they see this, they go wild and they attack. And that's, you know, you don't mind them killing off that, but it's the collateral damage. If that LPS ends up in your brain and then the immune system comes in and carpet bombs that area, you're going to do major destruction. If it ends up um, in a plaque in your artery, it's going to trigger those immune cells to squeeze through that endothelial layer into that cholesterol because there's some LPS dissolved in it and it sees it and says, this is a foreign invader and it attacks it and it inflames it. And what happens? It's not the plaque that kills you. It's when it becomes inflamed and then ruptures. When it ruptures, it triggers clots. And if the clot happens in your heart, in the arteries feeding your heart, you know, you know you end up with a heart attack. If it happens in the brain, you have a stroke. I mean, it just, it's, it's miserable. Um, so I, I guess what I thought was fascinating is if they measure this in people and they've done the studies, the people that have high LPS, their metabolic, their risk of metabolic syndrome, you know, having... Uh, you know, high triglycerides, you know, low HDL, um, you know, fat around the middle, it increases by 156%. Their risk of heart disease almost doubles. It goes up like 94%, if I recall correctly. And then when they follow those people, their risk of having what they call a, a coronary heart disease event and unlike an event when you're going to a wedding or a reunion or a basketball game, 
their events are having a heart attack. So those are the events that I don't want to attend. And basically, <laughs> it increased that risk by like 88%. And I was just like, wow, that's, that's crazy. So when they looked at all these people, most of them were, you know, had a low level, you know, like, uh, I, I won't give you the actual numbers, but let's say they had an extremely low level. People that had a little bit higher level, um, they had a, uh, what was it, uh, a threefold risk of having atherosclerosis, which was, you know, which is obviously, uh, you know, one of the biggest killers uh, of us and, you know, is the thing that's probably most likely to end our lives. And what really grabbed me when I dug into the science was that these LPS were ending up in the brain and they were positively associated with amyloid plaques in the brain um, and Alzheimer's. And I said, wow. So there was a study that just came out. Well, I shouldn't say just. I, it, was, it was either August. I thought it was August of 2022, but now I'm, now I'm questioning myself. Um, it might have been August of 2020. It was done at LSU in their neuroscience center in New Orleans. And they basically did some great work. And they found out that an LPS that starts in your gut ends up in the brain cells um, and it triggers massive inflammation. And it basically appears to be a key contributor to Alzheimer's disease. And I said, wow. Now I know that part of Alzheimer's has an inflammatory component. And I know that because um, there was a study years back on US veterans where the ones that had chronic pain actually ended up with substantially less Alzheimer's. And you think, wow, what's the connection? And it's because for five or more years, they were taking high doses of ibuprofen because they were in so much pain. But that's an anti-inflammatory, and that apparently also brought down their Alzheimer's risk. I don't think it's all inflammation, but I think that's a significant contributor because there's also a, a diabetes, you know, brain diabetes effect as well. So um, <clears throat> what they showed is that um, they found it in the cells, in the Alzheimer's disease patients' brains, that is the trigger along with the massive inflammation. And I thought to myself, I want to keep this stuff in my gut and have it exit my body. It really, you know, this whole idea about leaky gut, you're thinking, oh, I get a bloated belly. I don't feel so good. Wow, if that's going to be a contributor to Alzheimer's disease, then I want to do everything that I can to really, you know, f fix that inflammation in my gut and make sure that I have you know, tight barriers and so on. So there was one other study that just blew my mind that I know you'll like. And in this case, they took people and gave them you know, billionths of a gram of LPS. So just as uh, I did the calculations, if somebody weighed 160 pounds, they would give them it was 0 0.00073 milligrams. They would inject that into them. So just a ridiculously small amount, you know, just a, a tiny amount of it. And what happened? The people started to feel depressed. They got fatigued, they had reduced appetite, and they had cognitive impairment or brain fog. And I thought, wow, this is fascinating. Because when you, know, you know, when you feel hungover, when you have all that inflammation in your brain because maybe you partook of too much alcohol or you did something else, you know how your brain feels and you can't think clearly. You're easily um, stirred up and like that. So I just thought that, and their conclusion was that the symptoms look just like depression of an unknown cause. They call it idiopathic depression. And I thought that was, you know, that was fascinating. So that's the science piece of it that I was interested in. And then I said, okay, what can I do about this? And I, the first thing I wanted to do was help to 
you know, fix my gut barrier. And there are some strategies that you can follow. And I, and I did a talk a couple months back on how to do this. And there are a couple of probiotics that can really improve your gut barrier. And some of them are very new. They've just come on the market. Um, there are also things that you can consume that have been demonstrated to bind LPS in the gut. So it never has a chance to cross into your, into your body. And I'll, I'll, you know, one of those is activated charcoal. So if you ever feel toxic, or maybe you get home and you know you're going to feel bad the next day, maybe taking a little bit of activated charcoal before you go to bed, a good quality one that has high purity because you don't want to introduce impurities into your body. But all that surface area, uh, activated charcoal binds LPS beautifully. Now, it's, it's a funny story. I was traveling with my kids for a couple weeks and we went up to the coast of Maine and we were hiking and we were having fun. And I ate a lot of crappy food and I did a lot of things that I normally don't do. And I really felt toxic when I got back. And I dug into this stuff a little bit. So I said, I'm gonna put together a protocol. And so I started doing some activated charcoal. I started adding some particular, some different soluble fibers to my diet. And the reason is I wanted my gut to make more butyric acid. So when your body, when you consume fiber, it's a repeating sugar that you can't digest, but the gut bacteria, that's plant food for them. And so they can digest it. So you wanna give them different fibers from fruits and vegetables and plants and such. So um, I, I wanna give you a chance to, you know, to jump in and offer some drill down questions and, and like that, but I just thought, you're not hearing a lot about LPS, but you should be, because when this stuff gets in your bloodstream at ridiculously low levels, it elicits such a negative um, reaction by your immune system, which is you know helping to contribute to metabolic syndrome, apparently, uh, cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, uh, and possibly neurological impairment. And those are all things I just, I really want to avoid. So I, happy if you want to jump in for a minute. I know I've yeah, kind of been I on mean, a little bit of a, a roll. So. Yeah, I, I'm going to ask a, a series of short questions sure. because it'll, <clears throat> it'll fit the way we talk. <clears throat> you said that, uh, you know, LPS is a substance that is coming off the gram-negative bacteria walls when it... Uh, when it falls apart. Yes. I don't think probably we can avoid getting gram-negative bacteria into our gut because it'll get there. Absolutely. We, wh whatever we... Okay, so it's going to get there. So now you talk about gut... Uh, gut permeability. Yes. And, and, and when, they, when they injected that minute amount and it had an effect, a negative effect, I assume on the participants in the study that had good gut, gut barrier, maybe they didn't get those same well, results they, as much. I want to make it clear, they actually injected it into the bloodstream directly. Oh, I'm so sorry. So that's into why, the okay. so the gut wasn't relevant in this case, but it shows that only a tiny amount has to get in your bloodstream to elicit yes, really yes. negative effects. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very clear. Yeah. So now, I want to take it down to places where for myself sure. and for our viewers and listeners, what can we do right now? So I'm not putting you on the spot, no, but okay. you said... Yeah, I'm happy. You said... So okay. some of my strategies... Making, making the gut barrier better involves some probiotics, some of them new. Yeah. Can you get into some names? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, there's a common... There's a strain that has really good science behind it good clinical testing, and the strain is lactobacillus and then GC. Like in my mind, that means gas chromatography, but lactobacillus, G is in George, C is in Carlin, I guess. Yeah, so uh, yeah, shout out to the late George Carlin. So um, lactobacillus C GC looks really promising, and I have taken that, and I like it, and there's, and there's good data behind it. And then there's a new strain, 
and a hat tip to Dave Asprey because Dave is the one that, um, you know, I, I always like Dave and I always follow Dave. And Dave mentioned that he had tried this new strain and then it had really had positive benefits for him. And I said, you know, let me look into it. And they had really good scientific studies. And it's, um, the company is called, I believe, Pendulum, P-E-N-D-U-L, however you spell Pendulum. And I believe it's PendulumLife.com. Now, the downside is that it's not cheap. Um, and I think I found a code to get 20% off um, and I, you know, when I started it. But I've been now taking it for three months. And if you read their science, it appears that it stimulates the, um, uh, the cells that line your gut to produce more mucus, which is a viscous uh, goo. It's, you know, it's a gel, kind of a polysaccharide gel with water that helps you know, give you a better barrier function. So it actually seems to turn up the production of mucus by the cells that line your gut. It also seems to have some benefits in terms of blood sugar metabolism and um, and they have some other formulas that are more targeted that way. But I was interested in both of those. But what I would say is, if I look at how I felt in, uh, in August when I got back from this trip and how I feel now, I can eat a broader range of foods that in the past would have been problematic. And I'm not getting the bloating I'm not getting any brain fog. You know, there are a lot of things. Um, I thought my gut was one of the weak points in my physiology because I had a lot of gut problems for a lot of years. And I really feel like I have more of a cast iron gut again, back like I had in 1999. I had a, a really bad case of food poisoning on a business trip to Europe. Um, and I probably picked it up at a trade show and got some bad food or whatever, but it was brutal for three or four days. And at that point, my gut was bad for the next 15 years. And I went to GI Whoa. doctors, I did the, you know, they scoped me, they did the barium, they did the whole nine yards, and they couldn't figure it out. And then I finally realized, maybe six or seven years ago, um, I think it's Dr. Pimentel, who's at UCLA, did some very good work on SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And that can be triggered by a really bad bout of food poisoning. And so I finally cleared the SIBO and I went from being somewhat miserable to being good 90% of the time. Now I would say this stuff has probably, you know, brought me up another, you know, another order of magnitude. So now you maybe I'm good 99% of the time. So I'm psyched. I, I'm really happy. So I, I, those are so the two things. About- so th- those are two. And just before I forget, I also, for the course of um, 45 days, I took two capsules of ap- activated charcoal before I went to sleep at night. I always keep that away from any foods or supplements that I'm taking because I don't want the supplement to adsorb on the surface of the activated charcoal and and basically wipe it out. And I took a teaspoon of pure psyllium fiber. I used the Consil, which is just pure psyllium. I took a teaspoon before I went to bed at night and I took a teaspoon in the morning. And for the people that do, let's say the Bulletproof coffee or you know, skip breakfast, but they, they put MCT oil into their, in their coffee. The more fat that you have in your intestine, that also tends to increase permeability because it's lipid soluble, it's getting in, it's gonna open up some junctions a little bit. So if you consume a dose of fiber along with the fat, you can mitigate that effect. So I started doing a dose before I went to bed of the psyllium, and I did a dose in the morning just before I started drinking my Bulletproof coffee. And I would say within three days, I felt really so much better. And then it continued to improve. 
And it got so good now where I've actually been pretty lax about it for the last two months. I'm not telling people to be lax, but I'm just saying it seems like maybe I've calmed things down and I have a better barrier function and therefore I don't have to be quite as aggressive with some of these other other interventions as well. And this Okay, so the word the word lax in conjunction with the discussion about the gut almost uh, in, <laughs> invites you know a pun, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, I have a question. I mean, you talked about two probiotics and one prebiotic, you know, the fiber, the yes, pure psyllium. Yes. But uh, shouldn't we take a more diverse, uh, you know, array of soluble fiber? You should. And um, in fact, in that presentation that I did, I, I showed people my formula for my smoothie. And okay, in, okay. including, I, I, yeah, we, including lemons and, ta- you know, and putting the peel in to, to get all the bioflavonoids and the fiber. Yeah, so I believe you need a range of different vegetable fibers. I also think it's useful to do the viome testing because that'll tell you what you're low on and, you can, you know, and what fibers that you might want to provide more of, what foods you want to consume more of to help. Uh, improve your microbiome. Um, and there's one last thing. You've probably heard that people that have periodontal disease have a significantly elevated risk of heart disease. And people are like, what? That also appears to be at least partially mediated by LPS. So mm-hmm. I have done research on the oral microbiome and I've identified Um, a strain from a company in New Zealand, you can buy it on Amazon, that I really like. Um, And they've done some good science. The data looks good. And it does two things. One is it's going to really bring down inflammation in your mouth. Actually, more than two things. Two, it helps in terms of bad breath. It's a much better approach than using mouthwash to displace the bacteria that are producing some of the malodorous compounds. Um, and three, it's a, this, that particular species appears to have the ability to convert um, um, <clears throat> NO3 to NO2 to reduce nitrate to nitrite. And I know you know you want to convert NO3 to NO2, so when you swallow the NO2, you can make uh, nitric acid in your gut. You can make NO in your gut. And... You know, we're not going to talk nitric acid today, but you know, I know you've done the uh, uh, it's nitric acid, nitric oxide. I'm sorry about that. Nitric, don't drink, don't increase your levels of nitric acid. <laughs> it's nitric oxide, NO. So, um, so I every night when I go to bed, I put one of these lozenges in my mouth just before I go to bed. And the funny, the interesting part is in the morning when I wake up. I don't have a film in my teeth. I don't have those strep mutan bugs, which are the common bugs, building that superstructure on my teeth that traps stains that causes tooth decay. Because the strep mutans are um, critical to tooth decay and, and, teeth, and tooth staining and so on. And uh, in my earlier life, I helped the folks at Pfizer Consumer Healthcare build a robot that would actually um, allow them to automated test Listerine formulations through through this robot, and it actually ended up on the that robot ended up on the cover of the Pfizer Pfizer annual report, not just for consumer healthcare but for, for consumer healthcare and pharma. So I thought that's pretty cool. That was such a big deal. They actually put it on the cover of that report. So I, the people that I worked with were very happy that that had happened. So that was very cool. Um, so okay, I'm going to turn so it back to what you. Is yes, it? Please. What, what is it? What's this thing oh, um, that lowers um, inflammation in the mouth? You know, yeah, the yeah. Lozenge, uh, I guess. Do I have it around here? Um, it is, if I'm doing this from memory, it's Bliss, I believe it's B-L-I-S, but there may be two S's. Bliss, and then M as in Mary, 18. So the Bliss M18 was, they make two. I think they make another one with a 12. I haven't worked with that one. 
but I've used the M18 and I really do like it. So I. Uh, so that's a lozenge. It's a lozenge, and uh, I won't. I may have a box lying around here somewhere, but um, okay. if you just remember Bliss, either with one S or two, I don't know, and it's M18, and I don't have any connection with Jeff Bezos or Amazon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now here is a here is a question again from my greediness for myself and our viewers and listeners. Sure. Sure. You talk about that lecture that you gave where you shared yes. the components of your shake and other. How can we get that lecture? Yeah, so I have people from across the U.S. and from around the world that are in my tribe. And so I, every month, teach them a critical thing that I'm doing to enhance my health span, my longevity. And I teach them enough of the science so they get it, but not so much that they have a giant headache. Um, because when you understand it, it's much more compelling. And then I say, okay, now that you get it and you see the data, because when you see the data and, and you say, wow, I really don't want to double my risk of the number one killer. Maybe I'm going to make sure I try to keep my LPS in the low range, the people that didn't have the heart attacks, as opposed to in the high range. So enough so they get it. And then I say, here's how you do it. This is what I use. This is what I take. This is what I buy. These are my strategies. And then these are the watch outs. And then I say, have that conversation with your doctor, your MD, and make sure that it's okay for you. Um, and then sometimes they'll come back and say, hey, John, can you send me that paper? Because my doctor is really interested and I really want to share a couple of these references with them. And in fact, I have... Um, Multiple, multiple physicians in the U.S. and internationally that, that are part of my tribe because they say, I love this stuff. I never was taught this in medical school. I had one day on nutrition and none of this stuff was in there. And I don't have 20 hours a week to read on PubMed. I don't have 20 more hours to follow top researchers and dig into it and figure out who's right and who's not right. Because I, I try to bring the critical thinking. I'm, you know, I've, uh, I got my doctorate uh, in 85, so I don't know, almost 40 years ago. I'm good at reading papers and looking at the data and then saying, how real is this? Or, and how impactful is this? And then how can I use this to get healthier? Um, and I, I, when I was at Procter & Gamble, every time a technology came in to be used topically at P&G, I would sit down and their, their scientists would present to me and to a small group of people. And then I would ask drill down questions, but my job was to figure out, is this real? How solid is it? And of course, are there other ways that we can achieve this without spending this amount of money on this raw material or whatever. So I'm really good at sorting through, I guess, what's real from what's bullshit because there is so much BS in the health and supplement field. Um, and, you know, I have a PhD in chemistry. I've been doing this stuff for 40 years and I have to really work at it. For an average person, I don't know how they look at the 30,000 supplements in the market and make any sense of it at all because it's not trivial for me and yet I've been doing it for 40 years and I know how to do it. So, that, so we do that once a month and um, if you go to my website, johnsoddery.com, you know, they can read about it and there's no risk. If somebody wants to jump in and try it for a month, there's no risk. I'm, uh, economically, I'm very... Um, um, happy. This is my passion. I do it because I really, I want to touch people's lives. I feel like that's what I'm, I was put here for. Stay tuned for part two of this interview. Thank you for joining us today. I know you love what's coming next in part two. Be sure to click the subscribe button for more videos.